Hey there, this is Malorian, and this is going to be a 50-point War Machine battle report. And this is going to be a pretty big one for me, because this is the very last game in my Epic Magnus campaign. And for those who don't know, basically I love Epic Magnus, but I was so aggressive with him that I was getting myself killed on turn 2 half the time. It was really, really embarrassing. So I went forward for a simple campaign saying, if I can go 10 games and uh, not get myself cast or killed by the end of turn two, basically my opponents have to have two turns after I go, uh, then that's all good. I, and I've <laughs> evolved as a player. However, if he does get cast or killed in their turns there, I cannot use Epic Magnus for a full year. And uh, this is a big deal for me because he's a favorite caster, and uh, hopefully I can make it through this last game. Uh, something that I don't love is this stupid galleon. Uh, I do really like the rules, and I was going to paint them all up, but this guy's freaking arms break off all the time. And uh, I just glued and fixed them for this game, and just when I was taking them out of the nice little soft foam here, yeah, both arms broke off. So uh, screw you, galleon. So otherwise, uh, this is part of what I'll be facing at Xerxes. There's a centaur in the front. There is the, the Tyrant Commander. There is Tibbers and uh, the Pain Givers there. And then on this side over here, he has the Akuari. He has the Bronze Back and the Will Breaker. So the mission we're doing is 2014 Incursion. You can't see one of the flags because it's behind the, the building here on the right. But after the first turn, one of those outer flags will go away. It's the first one to five, and you get one for controlling, two for dominating if it's an outer flag, and one for dominating, dominating if it's the inner flag. Now, looking here at my list, I'm running Epic Magnus with the stupid no-arm galleon, the Renegade, uh, Min Cutthroats, Kale Baylock, the Max... Long Gunners, and then uh, Max Iterings of UA. It's a Tier 2 uh, Magnus Agenda. Now, looking at the plan for this, I, I won the roll to go first, and I took it. And really the plan is just kind of to go up the center, and I can really do a lot of pain with this. I mean, uh, definitely, especially if I can clear out the stuff in front, uh, the Galleon can kill two beasts by himself because I go up, I drag one, and I kill it pop the feet to trap the other one in place, and then kill the other one the next turn. So really in the center, I'm feeling really good. Um, he placed a lot of stuff on the right there, the Akuari. I mean, that's a big chunk of his army. And so what I do with the Idrians is I put them over there and made a prey of them because, first of all, they can probably, I mean, the, the bronze back will be a problem, but they can really mess those guys up on their own. And then if nothing else, let's say this flag goes away, uh, between assault and battery, I can still do you know a good licking to them and then run back to the center. So I think they'll do pretty well. I mean, 13 points in a flank is a lot, but I, I think it'll all work out. So on my first turn, I put one focus on each of the jacks, cast mobility, go up into the bunker. Uh, pretty much everything else is just kind of running up and getting into position and uh, waiting for him to come into my death range. So on his turn, he puts Defender's Ward up onto those uh, Centauri, also gives them plus two speed from the Tyrant, and they're up there, and man, those things are tough. They're like Defense 14, Armor 22, they are freaking scary. So yeah, all of a sudden I thought like before, like, oh yeah, I'll shoot down this medium infantry, no problem. Yeah, all of a sudden, <laughs> it is a pretty big problem. On the right side, he decided just to run up. He was thinking about trying to just walk up and take a shot, but uh, wasn't sure if he'd have the range, so he's just running up and really setting himself up there. Uh, probably should have had the bronze back in the front so he could do his counter charge, but hey, I'm happy the way it is. So really, my goals for my next turn is I, I need to get Epic Magnus to a spot where he can threaten with the feet for the, the next turn. I want to, what I figure I'm going to do is shoot and knock down some of those uh, Centauri so that they'll lose the, the shield wall, and then I'll have an easier time taking them down. And maybe, maybe I can kill the Tyrant. I'm not sure if I have range with my cutthroats, but uh, that would be pretty cool. And on the right side too, uh, just try and shoot those guys up and really do a lot of damage to them. Although it looks like things are going to change here because the right flag is the one that went away. So all of a sudden, like I said, uh, whereas I could have like, okay, let's go after these uh, in Sundari or Akuari rather and uh, really mess them up. No, now I just want to kind of like shoot them up, tie them up and run away because I don't need to be over here whatsoever. 
And so basically that's what happens. I go up with the, the cutthroats. I put one onto the uh, renegade and I put four onto the uh, galleon and then the cutthroats come up. Uh, turns out that I'm out of range for the, the tyrant, but yeah, I, I aimed and I shot with the uh, renegade first in the obliterator rocket, so I knocked down three of the Centauri and uh, Tibbers there, Tiberian. And then with that, with them being knocked down, my poison shots did a lot better. I was able to kill like one and do a little bit of damage to another one. Then the Galleon started shooting and boosting damage and he finished off the, the other two that were there. Uh, otherwise, I go up with the, <laughs> the the silly little long gunners there and they all do a big combine into the one on the right and I roll like super crappy. I think I rolled like a, a three doing one damage. So yeah, that, that could have gone a lot better. But otherwise, Magnus is just barely going up. Uh, Kill Balok took his two shots and did two points of damage. And then otherwise, in the far right, I did the assault and battery, did two shots, and uh, basically killed uh, one of the guys there. And then the other one left on one damage or something silly. Um, and then I, I charged in with two, killing the one and leaving another one again on one damage. And then otherwise, uh, the Idrian just moving back over to the center. So on his turn here, I really expected him to be a, a lot more aggressive, running those Centauri into my face and everything else. But uh, I think he's trying to hold off or maybe set up for the counter while his right side came in. I'm not really sure what the, the planning was there. Uh, but either way, what happened is he kind of took off Defender's Ward. He now put on to the other beast here. The, he charged in after he got plus two speed and really smashed my my Renegade there, taking off my my shredder arm so he, that's down uh, he was also hoping maybe to really smash him and then uh, control there but you know he was outside control range couldn't buy any more attacks and so I'm contesting there and then otherwise on the right side basically he went and killed the two guys that had engaging with him and then ran one of those bastards right in the middle so he's engaging almost all my Idrians so that was unfortunate for me but now, looking at this, and with the way that he was being kind of holding back, and again, maybe the reason why he was doing this is because he was preparing for my feet, but I think I still got him. So, if I go and I charge over to the left leg, I can dominate, uh, pop my feet, trap him, dominate on his turn, dominate on my turn, and it's game over. Uh, meanwhile, I'm uh, still trying to do some attritioning on the center and right and stuff, but uh, looking at this, I should be uh, pretty easy. And so that's what I do is I run over with uh, Kale Baylock because he's basically useless. Uh, cast mobility. I had one focus on the Galleon. I charged over, killed Kale Baylock, popped my feet. Uh, then I really noticed here that I got the... Uh, there's only two models that I didn't catch in my feet over here. I, I didn't catch the banner guy that goes with the Tyrant, and I didn't catch Xerxes. So what I want to do is try and make sure that I try and kill and block what I can, so that's why I had it so the Galleon went and ran right into his face just to kind of really lock everything down and cause activation issues. I had the Cutthroats move in and they shot that one banner attachment guy, so don't need to worry about him whatsoever. Uh, then I was able to move the Renegade out. I took a free strike and I lost my Obliterator rocket arm. I uh, did two taps into the the guy there with my long gunners and did more than half damage, so pretty good there. Uh, after I did this, actually, I thought, like, geez, am I actually contesting? But when we measured it out, that leftmost long gunner is just barely contesting by, you know, two millimeters or something, so whew. It doesn't really matter, but uh, glad I didn't just give away points. Uh, meanwhile, there on the right, not too much I could do. They basically go and kill the one uh, Aquari that was in the middle of me, and I just tie up all the rest. So looking really good. Now, I want to kind of explain what was going on here. Now, when I popped my feet, it, first of all, it was a little bit bad that I didn't get Xerxes because I want to keep him the hell away from me. However, with plus two speed, that means that Xerxes has a threat range of 12, so I was really completely safe. Either he'd be caught in the feet, or he can't get to me. No big deal. Now, even with this, uh, I'm sure the big question is, why the hell is the Galleon up there when he doesn't need to be? Well, there's a couple of reasons for this. 
First of all, I knew my opponent really wanted to kill the Galleon. He, he asked me to bring it. He wants to see a Scorn Beast rip a Colossal apart. So with me throwing him in there, I know that he's going to be like, all right, I can now smash this guy. He'll be focusing on it. And while he focuses on destroying the Galleon, he then will have less focus on actually stopping the scenario. So, you know, he'll cause activation issues, blah, 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 change in focus. So I got that going for me. Uh, another reason here, too, is uh, actually I remember back where it was exactly the same thing. I had Epic Magnus versus Xerxes. He was bricking up. And I just went up, pop feet, triple scored, and I won the game. And that opponent I have never seen play War Machine again. He has just disappeared. And uh, I don't want to be a hobby killer. So, you know, if I'm going to go and do a whole Magnus, I lock you out, triple score, win, I want to make sure I give something to my opponent so they don't feel like it was a waste of the game. Uh, looking at this here too, the one thing that I saw that he could do to try and stop it is if you on the pain givers gave them the desperate pace, I'm pretty sure the one there could run the 16, uh, get over and contest. Now, if that happened, then what I would be planning to do after is then on the middle flag, hopefully destroy that beast, score there, and I'm pretty sure I could do that between the long gunners and all the, the Idrians I have there and stuff like that, and then I could just score over here too and still get to five points. Uh, if I can't kill the beast in the center, <laughs> all of a sudden things get a little bit more difficult, but uh, that definitely was one worry I had. Luckily for me, though, that's not what he goes for. Uh, originally, he does try to try and go for the assassination. I explain the math, and then he just goes after the galleon. And man, uh, that Tiberian, he was like, after he had Fury on him, he was like POW 24 or something, or 23. So yeah, he was plus 4 to his, his dice. And between just the one mace attack and the tusks, he completely took out my left side. And uh, I had taken a little bit of damage before, but... Uh, it only really took him one bite bot attack to destroy my galleon. So he destroys that. He feels good. I score on his turn. I just score again on my turn, and it's game over. So with the tale of Epic Magnus, that means I made it 10 games, didn't die stupidly, and uh, that's fantastic. I, I really can't wait to go and start trying out some other mercenary lists, some more competitive ones. But, uh, you know, it, it might seem like it's such a small thing, like, oh, great, you did a campaign not to be dumb. But you know what? It, it's something that really draws attention to it, right? Maybe you're a guy that sometimes mismanages Fury. Okay, we'll do a campaign on that. We're okay, in 10 games, if I ever have to cut or if I ever have a beast that frenzies because I mismanaged Fury, I can't use this caster for a year. And it really helps you focus on it. And I've noticed that I'm playing a lot smarter with my caster. So either way, thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye.